Our investment tip is, or it's all about, should you allow pets in your rental property? And we have some stories for yeah, you guys. It's, it's always a very, very contentious issue when we start to talk about pets. Um, I know all you landlords out there, you probably have some great stories about pets and some not so great stories. We'll share a couple of them, but uh, we just want to start with one of our clients who yeah. recently put a property on rent faster and needed help in getting more um, more interest in it. Views, yeah. yeah. So what happened is, uh, congratulations to Joanne and Noel. I'm not sure if you're on the call tonight, but uh, they live in Brentwood. We just bought them a place in, Tim, just off 17th Ave there. It would Glendale. be Glendale. And we picked up a real, real good lot there. Uh, we paid 500K for it. It is a builder's lot. They're going to move into the property, sweep the basement, make it legal, and then build on it at a much later date. It's walking distance to the sea train. So congratulations to to uh, Noel and Joanne, but they put their place on rent faster just two, three days ago, and they've only had one call. And uh, part of our service is we help people rent their properties out or give them every bit of advice they need to, to make sure it's successful. And we realized when we looked at the ad that pets were not included. So we need to stress this to everybody out there. If you do not include pets, you're ruling out roughly, we don't know the exact number, but you're ruling out roughly 50% of tenants out there. And we have to tell you, tenants come with one or two things, either a pet, and it could be a crazy pet. Tim will get into some of the crazy pets that we've seen. And they typically come with a huge TV. We don't know where that comes from, but whenever we go into rental properties, we either see the 85 inch TV and uh, either a huge dog or some sort of crazy spider or snake. But Tim, what yeah, else? So, so that? when we're talking about and admitting pit, uh, pets into your rental properties, we always qualify that with, you know, it has to be a reasonably sized dog, you know, a cat that is trained with the litter box, things like that. I mean, in the past, I've had potential tenants come in you know, with massive Rottweilers or, you know, two or three pit bulls. Um, that's definitely a no-no because that's going to be an insurance issue for you, a safety issue for you. So you want to make sure that the pet um, actually, oh, hold on a second here. You want to make sure that the pet can live within your unit and not wreck the place. Yeah, especially if you've got a suited property, there is no way you could have a pit bull upstairs. Um, it's just going to turn the people off that are living downstairs. So we always say that if you have a suited property and you're renting out upstairs and downstairs, you have to play, play matchmaker. And if you throw a big dog in there, it's not going to work. The reason why we're telling you guys this, you have to really be on top of your game when you're selecting a pet. You have to either meet the pet or at least get a picture of the pet. Tenants are very good sometimes. You turn up and there's an extra pet or there's a different pet there. And I can honestly say, Tim has seen one of my properties years ago in Coventry, the tenants, and this is why we do what we do to teach people how to invest in real estate. The tenants had a couple of cats and they let the cats use the washroom anywhere in the property, right, Tim? And once that happens with cats, that smell, the only way to get rid of that smell is to basically pull the cup back, go to the subfloor, scrub the floor uh, with bleach, and then you might even have to paint over it to seal that smell in. That's how bad it can get. And I can tell you, Tim, you remember it cost me a lot yeah. of money uh, to take three levels of flooring out in a property. And at that time, I actually had a property manager looking after the property that the tenants did it to. So that's why we teach people how to invest, yeah. how, how to manage your properties correctly and even if you do have a property manager you have to remember you have to manage the property manager to make sure they're doing the right job yeah and some of the crazy <laughs> pets that we've come across we've gone in viewing properties and there's parrots or cockatoos or whatever in a cage and they're swearing at us so <laughs> so you could imagine what the tenants are saying to each other and speaking about all the time if the parrots swear at visitors um, there was one house, I think it was in Copperfield or Cranston. Um, we walked in the door and it smelled like a swamp. It and smelled we, like a zoo. Yeah. And we were like, <laughs> what is this? So we went all around the house, couldn't see anything. When we went down in the basement, we kind of, uh, the smell got stronger and stronger. And underneath the stairs, there was a tortoise. Yeah. It was like, huge, this big. 
And it was like one of those things you see on the Galapagos Islands. That's how big it was. Yeah, it had a heat lamp. It had its own space in the basement to kind of go around. And we just couldn't believe it. So um, should you allow pets? Yes, but you really have to screen what type of pets going in. And you have to remember if you've got nice hardwood floors or you do have a tenant living downstairs, they are going to hear um, the dogs on the hardwood floors. And, and if you do have nice hardwood, it will get scratched up. So you have to remember a pet deposit, if it's $250, it's not going to be enough to cover the cost. So we have to stress that. But at the same time, if you rule out pets altogether, you're not gonna get many um, views or you're not gonna get much interest because most tenants out there, and they will pay extra to live in the property um, if need be to have their pets in yeah, there. Yeah, and I've had tenants where it's, it's an older couple or an older lady and you know she's got a small little lap dog and that's part of her family. So you know, you know she's gonna look after it. Um, it's not gonna ruin the house. So you use your own discretion when you're deciding to take pets or not. Um, just beware, and if they do have a dog or a cat, make sure you're doing your walkthroughs once a month because you're going to want to make sure that that house is being, you know, looked after and the pets being cared for. Yeah. So that was our investment tip of the month. If you want more tips, we do have our free TV.